Hello, Bethel Chapel and Hopewell AME Church. We welcome you and our virtual family and friends to our online services. Although we can't physically worship together, we invite you to join and worship with us wherever you are. We pray that you are touched by this service and allow God's presence into your home and into your heart. Let go of what is weighing you down and move forward in faith. Let's get ready to worship. Good morning and praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Trent Ogilvy, Pastor of Bethel Chapel and Hopewell AME Church. I welcome you on this super blessed Communion Sunday. That's right, we are super blessed because God has richly blessed us with life, health, and strength. He has blessed us with grace and mercy, joy and peace. And you know what? We are here today to honor and praise God for he gets all the glory for everything that he has done in our lives. So welcome to worship and praise God from whom all blessings flow. And now our call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. They are planted in the house, O Lord, and those who are planted shall flourish in the courts of our God. O Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house, the place where your glory dwells. But the Lord, it is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may it be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing his praises. This morning we will sing God's praises from hymn number 405. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know is nothing but the blood of of Jesus. Let us sing this great hymn of the church, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. Your program. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Verse 1. What can wash away my sin?
On this super blessed communion celebration, we come now to pray together, collectively, knowing that in the midst of life, we all need God's mercy and forgiveness for our many sins by thought, word, and deed. So let us pray this morning. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with heart of repentance and true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name evermore, praising you and saying together this morning, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, most high. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Ephesians. We'll be reading from Ephesians chapter number three, beginning at the 14th verse. And then from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. Let us hear the word of the Lord. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives his name. 
I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do measurably more than we all ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And Ephesians chapter four, verse 11. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind and teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we declare thanks be to God. Amen. Yo 
Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. It is good to dwell together to, to praise God and to worship God on this Sunday morning. Listen, as we get started uh, uh, this day, this super blessed communion Sunday, I want to encourage you to go to our website um, and click on giving. And this is the Super Bowl of sharing uh, Sunday. And we really wanna make this month a uh, Super Bowl of sharing uh, due to us not meeting in person. Um, our YPD, uh, along with our missionaries, uh, uh, usually receives a offering uh, to go toward their efforts. And I'm asking you, especially on this uh, Super Bowl Sunday, um, this is the Super Bowl of sharing. And on behalf of the YPD, they will so greatly appreciate you going to our website, click on giving. If you're already doing that, if you could uh, make a special offering of $10 to help support uh, the work of our YPD as they take the offering that you received on this Sunday, that you give on this Sunday, and they're gonna bless a, uh, a nonprofit in our community uh, that is doing great work. Won't you help us with that? I would so greatly appreciate it. As we get into our message this morning, on this uh, Super Bowl uh, Sunday. Uh, we are super blessed um, on this Communion Sunday for who Jesus is and what he has done in our lives. And I wanna start with just a little bit of humor for those of you who are trying to get prepared for the big game, don't really know uh, what's going on. Maybe you're not into sports, or don't understand what football is about. I'm going to uh, try to help you out this morning um, in regard to uh, some uh, information uh, that will get you ready for the big game uh, from uh, church, because you do know uh, the church has its own strategies and ways that we do things. But if you hear these terms, uh, you'll kind of uh, maybe uh, understand what's happening uh, with the uh, game on tonight. Quarterback sneak. 
This is sometimes uh, when uh, church members give um, a dollar and they try to sneak a quarterback. All right. Uh, draw play. What many children do with the bulletin during worship. Halftime. This is the period usually between Sunday school and worship when sometimes people choose to leave and go back home. Bench warmer. This is one who does not sing, pray, work, um, or, or give, but apparently they do nothing but just sit on the church bench. All right, uh, staying in the pocket. What happens uh, to a lot of money uh, during offering time when it comes uh, to giving toward the Lord's work? The two minute warning. The point at which we realize the sermon is almost over. And so you gather your children, your belongings, and uh, it's time to hit the door. Instant replay. This is what happens when the preacher loses his notes and falls back on last week's illustration or last month's sermon. And trap. This is what happens when you're called on to pray, but you're there asleep and you didn't recognize uh, that your name had been called. All right, just a little humor to get us started uh, for our message on today. And I want to talk from the subject of championship church, a championship church from uh, Ephesians chapter three. And we uh, read into Ephesians chapter four, beginning at verse 11. Um, Jesus uh, gives us a clear indication, especially as Paul is revealing uh, to the church of Ephesus. He's left us this model on this rock. I shall build my church, my church, and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This concept of church is Jesus uh, demonstration to us of what he wants uh, his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. He establishes the church to exemplify his unity, his love, his joy, where members can be in fellowship and connection with one another. He wants us to always remember, as he says in the scripture, how, how we can grasp the love of Christ, how high, how wide, how long and deep is his love and uh, that his love surpasses all that we can even think or imagine. And he has the power to do uh, more than we can ask or even think according uh, to the power that is work in us to God be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. So in the church, we should always magnify and give glory to God. But you know, I um, am kind of uh, puzzled and confused sometimes, even as we are preparing for Super Bowl Sunday, the big game uh, tonight, um, a few hours, this game is going to be played and all of the, the, the drama, all of the uh, pre preparation, all of the media attention and the build up to the big game. Uh, two teams are facing off uh, against each other for Super Bowl 55. Four 15-minute quarters, these men will go up and down the field, expending enormous energy and skill, uh, chasing a piece of pig skin uh, uh, to try to get to the end zone to score touchdowns. Um, Yes, um, I'm headed to the Super Bowl myself, but I will be on my couch because tickets are starting at $4,800 per person. Many Americans will be glued to their television sets, all wanting to know the answer. Who will win? Will it be the legend Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or the young, amazing star Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs? And I come to tell you, I already know who the winner is going to be. I already given you this prediction right here on this message at Bethel Chapel and, and Hopewell. I'm giving you the indication. I know who's going to win the game. It's going to be the team who has the most points when the clock runs out in the fourth quarter. For many of us, we must ask the question, what does it take to be a 
Super Bowl champion, if it could be hyped up, if it could be publicized, if it could be commentated, we would have all kinds of great players. But what does it take? I believe there are some specific traits that a championship team must uh, demonstrate. Um, uh, one says that they need to have a great desire to win. They must have discipline so that they know how to play and they don't get penalized as a result of the lack of discipline. They must have commitment. They must have great character and they must be willing to sacrifice it all to win the big game, the Super Bowl. In football, many people play the game but not many rise to the level of champion. What separates a team with desire, discipline, commitment, focus, and sacrifice that they are willing to apply on the field? Vince Lombardi said, uh, he was the former coach of the Green Bay Packers and who had won uh, 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 Super Bowl championships, he stated what it takes to be number one. Winning is not a sometime thing, it's an all the time thing. You don't win once in a while, you don't do things right once in a while, you do them right all the time. Winning is a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing. Every time a football player goes to play his trade, he's got to play uh, from the ground up, from the sole of his feet right up to his head. Every inch of him has to play. You've got to be all in. Oh, I love that from Vince uh, Lombardi because he's giving us an indication. If you're going to win, you got to be a winner from the ground up. All of you, you got to be all in. But he says not only is winning a habit, but losing is a habit because those who uh, lose or demonstrate a lack of discipline, a lack of character, a, a, a lack of commitment. Uh, those habits, if you don't change them, uh, gets into your mind, gets into who you are, and you begin, because of the things that have happened, to feel like you are, are a loser. But this morning, I come to tell you there is uh, the ability to have a championship church. For a football team is 11 unique players working together to reach the same goal. So is the body of Christ. We are all members of one body with different gifts, different strengths, different skills, different talents, but God has created us all in his image. So we are all somebody. We are all created with a purpose. We're all created to receive God's power. And uh, we, we, we may have programs, but if we have programs without God's power, we're not going to have effectiveness. If we've got pain, but we don't have progress, uh, where are we moving? If we got hype, but no Holy Spirit power to actually make a difference on the inside, if we are half hearted in our commitment to serving the Lord. And we're not all in, in spite of what might come against us, in spite of pandemics, in spite of not being able to meet within the four walls of the church. We've got to be all in because we know that we have been called to win. We've been called by Jesus Christ. And let me tell you this morning, it's important because the two teams who are going to be playing in the Super Bowls, they're going to be huddled, huddled uh, there uh, calling plays and, and, and huddled there uh, to get the instructions that are coming from the coach on the sidelines telling them what to do on the field. But I believe all the 70,000 uh, and more uh, people, it, it may not be that many in the stands this time due to the pandemic, but for the number of people who are watching on the TV and those who are in the stands, they're not paying money. They didn't uh, uh, turn on the game just to watch how well the teams huddle. They want to know what happens after the huddle. They want to know, uh, uh, have you huddled um, um, and talked about what the play is going to be, but have you prepared yourself to execute the play after the huddle. I come to tell you that's what happens uh, in church. Uh, a lot of times we get together um, on, on Sundays and we were able to say we had, oh, didn't we have a good holy huddle? Didn't we do well together? Oh, oh, wasn't we, uh, wasn't it a great message? Oh, didn't the choir really sing? But what did we do after the huddle? After the service was over, after 
we uh, went to our respective homes and, and went to our respective neighborhoods? Did we really make a difference? Did we allow God who was working in us uh, to work through us? Were we really all in or were we just showing up for the huddle? I believe these times question and will reveal are you all in or were you just playing church? Were you just dressing up uh, to look a part of the church, but you weren't really committed to the work that God had called you to do? Yes, um, we are measured um, as a church by not how well we huddle, but how well we carry out the plans that God has for us. Rick Warren says there are five purposes for a championship church. The church, number one, must grow stronger through worship. That's knowing Christ, amen, as we worship him. Number two, churches must grow deeper through discipleship. That's growing in Christ. Number three, churches grow warmer through fellowship. That's loving in Christ. Number four, churches grow broader through ministry, reaching out to the community and others. Uh, the churches grow larger through evangelism. As I have learned the word, as I have heard the word, as God has ministered to me and changed my life, now I'm gonna go and tell somebody else and, and invite them to come to Jesus. That is how the church is sharing Christ. I'm glad this morning that we're on God's team. Hallelujah, and God uh, knew uh, what we needed, and he put his team together the way he wanted it to be. God is the owner of the team. Uh, Jesus is the coach. We are to listen, learn, watch, and follow, and obey the instructions that Jesus gives to us. Uh, he tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 that he's provided some assistant coaches, uh, apostles, and prophets, evangelists, pastors, uh, to equip the saints for the work of ministry. That's our service to God and one another. We all need to be equipped. We all need to be developed. We all need to be strengthened. Amen. And God provides what we need, amen, for the work that he has called us to do so that the body of Christ may be built up. Each player has a purpose. Uh, the disciples, number one, who are called by God on God's team, we are all disciples. Uh, number one, we must reach unity in the faith. Number two, and knowledge of the Son of God. And three, become mature attaining to the full measure of Christ. Why do we need uh, to make sure we reach unity and faith and have knowledge of Jesus Christ and we become mature? So that we are no longer infants tossed to and fro, confused and tricked by the waves of controversy. Uh, Satan is the common enemy. And uh, tonight, even as the game is played, the way football works, you've got an offense who's trying to move the ball down the field to score a touchdown, but you've got a defense who is trying to block them, who is trying to oppose them, to keep them from moving toward the goal and destination. The defense has a scheme that it is putting out to try to confuse the offense to stop their progress. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody. Satan has designed schemes to stop uh, us as the people of God. He's designed schemes to try to come and mess up your family. He's designed schemes to try to get into your finances. He's designed schemes to try to get in your mind and make you think that God doesn't care. God doesn't love you. You can't make progress. You can't be successful. But I come to tell you, Jesus us, amen, wants you to know that he has, he has the master plan. He has the master play for your life, amen, and God has designed it so that we can be victorious no matter the scheme of the enemy. God's power is greater. No matter the trick of the, of the wicked one, no matter what the scheme is, amen, we can become mature to recognize Satan's scheme and know that we're not ignorant of his devices. We know what he's trying to do, but in the name of Jesus, it is exposed. And we're going to follow the voice of God and hear the play that he's calling for our life. And we're still going to be victorious. We're still going to make progress. We're still going to be successful in spite of the obstacles, in spite of the bumps and bruises and tackles, uh, all the opposition I might have in the name of Jesus. I believe it. I 
will have the victory. Yes, the enemy tries to block us. The enemy tries to stop us. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The playbook of God, his promises in the Bible, we must know it, we must obey it, we must live it so that when we get on the field, we can recall his word. Amen. When we get on the field of life and there are difficulties and hard times and opposition that comes against us, amen, we can recall the promises of God, the playbook, amen, and we can continue continue to move forward and win the game. Yes, if the Super Bowl is played this evening, there are two teams on the field doing battle, playing the game. The rest of us as fans will be screaming and some complaining and critiquing and some eating at home. And it's a whole lot easier for you to tell the quarterback how to throw and the running back where to run and the kicker how to kick when you're in the stands or on the couch at home eating uh, 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 dip and, and chips and, and, and chicken wings, it's a lot easier for you to criticize when you're not on the field having to make the decision, when you're not on the field uh, having to deal with the opposition, when you're not on the field feeling the pressure and the stress. But I am convinced that we've got a lot of spectator believers who love to scream and shout and ridicule and gossip from the stands. But all this morning, I'm coming to challenge you to get out of the stands and get on the field. Yeah, on the field, that's where the championship church needs to be. Oh, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We need a championship church who has been called for this time to come off the sidelines, come off the bench, come off the couch, put the chicken wings down, uh, uh, put the Doritos to the side, and come and get on the field and help bring hope, help bring life, help bring love to this community that we live in. We need a championship church that is engaged. How do we know that the championship church is engaged? That's point number one. The believers are devoted to one another. They give preference to one another. They love one another. They refrain from judging one another. They edify one another. They serve one another. They don't hurt one another. They don't provoke one another through conceit. They help carry one another's burdens. They are patient with one another. They are kind, forgiving. They submit to one another, esteem one another, uh, encourage one another to do good works. They don't slander one another. They don't complain against one another. They confess their sins one to another and pray for one another. They extend hospitality and love to one another. That's the championship church that Jesus is calling for us to be. Ephesians Chapter 4, verse 13 says, Until they all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure, the fullness of Christ. We are believing through worship. We are belonging to the church through fellowship. But we are becoming all that Christ wants us to be through discipleship as we listen to our head coach, Jesus Christ. And he gives us the instruction. He runs us through uh, the drills. He, he, he allows us to experience uh, things to cultivate our faith and build up our strength so that we know his grace is sufficient. Colossians chapter 3 says, put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of your creator. That's the second point. The championship church is empowered. We need a new spiritual uniform. When the teams go out, they don't wear the same thing. There's a difference. There's going to be a, a different uniform that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have on that's different from the Kansas City Chiefs, but you're going to be able to recognize them by their uniform, how they are dressed. We have received a new spiritual uniform. I'm dressed to be blessed. Oh, hallelujah. That's why this super blessed uh, communion Sunday is so important because I am dressed to be blessed. Colossians 3 
Verse 12 says, therefore, as God's chosen people who are holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Do you have it on this morning? Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Then verse 13 says, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another forgive as the Lord forgave you. You might be dressed up. Yes, we're dressed up uh, to be blessed uh, up and we are thankful for his blessings. We're thankful for his love. We're thankful for his grace. But because you are dressed and you are dressed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, amen, it changes the way you act. It changes, amen, the way you talk. It changes, amen, uh, how you can forgive uh, those who, who misuse you and talk about you. You can even love your enemies. Hallelujah. I'm dressed Amen. In his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before his throne on Christ, the solid rock. I stand. Yes. He tells us to bear with each other. We all make mistakes. We all mess up at times, but he tells us to bear with one another. We're still on the same team. We're on God's team. Amen. And God loves us. He forgave us for while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. He was patient enough. He was long suffering. He died for us while we were still messed up and in our sins. And today we must bear with each other and forgive each other for whatever the grievance is. Because I come to tell you, where would I be without God's forgiveness? Oh yeah, I've got a white robe on this morning, but I need his love. I need his mercy. I need his forgiveness for I have messed up. I have sinned. I have failed. Amen. I've had faults in my life, but I'm thankful this morning that he looked beyond my faults and saw every single one of my needs. We got to forgive as the Lord forgives us, that's why we come to this communion table, to remind us, to remember how Jesus so willingly and lovingly forgave us when we needed it the most. He didn't condemn us. He came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. He tells us that he comes to us this morning, not that we might be condemned, but that we might be saved. And verse 14 says in Colossians chapter three, verse 14, over all these virtues, over the compassion, the kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. We gotta be dressed in his love this morning. I need you to understand that sometimes when we mess up, sometimes when we fail, tonight there'll be not just uh, two teams on the field, the Buccaneers and the Chiefs, but there'll be a team of referees who have the stripes on and the referees have the power to throw the flag, to stop the play when there is something done that is not uh, uh, the way it was supposed to be that is in violation and not accordance to the rules. The referees would throw the flag to stop the play and issue a penalty. As believers, we have received the instructions from the league office in heaven. We've been given a rule book called the Bible under the authority of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The fact the Bible tells Moses gave the law, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. He gave the disciples when he uh, got uh, after the three years of his ministry there in the upper room that had been prepared uh, for him and the disciples. Jesus, amen, comes with a with a pregame message uh, during the last supper that we celebrate during this communion. And Jesus took the bread and gave uh, thanks and he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner after supper, he took the cup and said, this is the New Testament in my blood, which is poured out for you. Jesus is our MVP. He is our most 
valuable person. Amen. Because there's nobody who can save like Jesus. Nobody can deliver like Jesus. Nobody can heal like Jesus. Nobody can redeem us like Jesus. Nobody can lead us to victory no matter what the opposition and Satan brings our way. Nobody is like Jesus. Jesus is revealing to his disciples this a message that he gives to his disciples is, is, is the last time that he's with them before he gets arrested, before he's put on trial, before he's taken to Calvary, and before he, he hung, hung, hung his head and he died, amen, for your sins and mine, and he was put in the grave and he rose on the third day with all power. Jesus shared this message with his disciples in the pregame meal, letting them know I'm all in. This is my body. This is my blood. Amen. I'm putting it all on the line. And I'm coming to, to share with you this morning and challenge you this morning. Are you all in? Because Jesus was all in for you. That's the reason we can be a championship church. Because Jesus put his life on the line. He was all in. Made the perfect sacrifice. Gave his all. Hallelujah. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed us white as snow. Without Jesus, we would not have hope. Without him, we wouldn't have any future. Without him, we wouldn't have the hope of, of redemption, and we wouldn't have a home in heaven. But because Jesus was all in, today you and I have the victory. Today you and I are champions because of Jesus Christ. Oh, he's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the honor and glory. No matter what happens in your life, look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your faith. No matter what happens, amen. Uh, yeah, we've been talking about uh, the goat, but I just want to talk about the lamb for a little bit. The lamb that was slain, that came to take away the sins of the world. Yes, he is the greatest of all time. There's nobody like Jesus. When he came into my life, he took me just as I was without one plea. But I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. Come on and give Jesus the praise and thank him that we are part of a championship church that is led by Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance. Thank you for the promise. Thank you for the direction that we can be what you have called us to be. Because you were all in, fully committed to the work that you gave your body, your blood. Lord, we submit to you this morning. We beseech you, God, by the mercies of God, that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. And we should not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may be able to prove with that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Thank you, Lord, that because you were all in and when we would let you get all into us, that we will become the champions you have called us to be and we will have victory. For this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Thank you, Jesus. We love you and we praise you in your blessed name. Amen. We're now prepared for our Holy Communion as we celebrate together on this super blessed Communion Sunday. Now we prepare our hearts, our minds, and our souls to receive of this Holy Sacrament of Communion. I ask that those who have received the Communion Kits at home uh, would please wait until we are finished with our uh, Communion uh, celebration and our consecration, and I will give you instructions of when you are to receive the communion. And we will do so together in unity as the body of Christ. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, you may draw near in faith. Get to a quiet place, uninterrupted, a sacred place, along with you and God as we receive together 
of this communion. Draw near in faith to take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession by meekly kneeling. If you're not able to kneel in your own place where you are, your sacred place, kneel humbly in your spirit as we receive together. And now our general confession. May we pray, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we have committed from time to time by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Our most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we do not presume to come to this your table trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, according to your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. When the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat this. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. I will receive of the communion first. Please hold just a moment until I am finished and then I will give instructions for you to receive. The Lord, this is your bread that represents your body. I thank you, Lord, that you gave your life and sacrifice for me. You were all in, you put it all on the line. And so I take and receive of the bread by faith. Likewise, our merciful Savior, I am thankful that you shed your blood for us on Calvary, where you gave it all. Sin had left a crimson stain, but your blood washed us and made us white as snow. Thank you, Lord, for the blood that you shed for me. I drink it by faith. And I'm thankful for this holy sacrament, this covenant, that we have renewed together. And now, my brothers and sisters, after you have taken the hand sanitized wipes provided to you, and you wipe your hands, and now you may take of the communion kit in your hand. On the tab, if you would press down 
on the tab facing you and then bring it back up. At the very top, you will have the clear top that you will remove that provides the bread for you to receive. May you take it in your hand. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for you to preserve you soul and body unto everlasting life. May you take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. You may now take and receive of the bread. Likewise, the cup, we've removed the tab on top of the cup. This is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed for you to preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. And you may now take and drink of the cup. We're thankful this morning to receive what the Lord has provided for us. We receive it this morning with thanksgiving and remembrance of his life, death, and passion, and his resurrection that gives us power and gives us hope. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Let the church say, Amen. Well, praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. We are so glad that you celebrated with us on this super blessed communion Sunday. We are thankful for what God has done, for how he has continued to minister to us. And through Jesus Christ, we know that we are victorious. As we live, we move, and we have our being. We are thankful that we know we can say, go Jesus, go Jesus, go. Because he is the one that gives us the life and sustains us the abundant life that assures us that we have salvation and we have everlasting life. May God bless you. May he forever keep you. That is our prayer. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That's my prayer for you. Amen. Conquer the enemy.